The pituitary adenomas are basically the uh, tumors of the pituitary gland will be discussed in uh, this section of the pituitary gland. Uh, in this third section of the pituitary adenomas, there is the etiology, uh, etiology and the molecular pathogenesis of the pituitary adenoma. Then there is the certain pathology. The what is the basically the pathophysiology behind the adenomas and the clinical features that the whole patient presents with the pituitary adenomas. Uh, the pituitary adenomas are the benign tumor that often causes the excess of, of the uh, certain hormone. The most common is the prolactinoma in which the prolactin uh, concentrations are increased in the blood corresponding to the certain endocrine hyperfunction. Uh, basically, the pituitary adenomas are more common in the adults uh, and the prolactin uh, producing adenomas are the most common type of the pituitary adenoma. Uh, there are certain cells, the respective cells which are basically responsible for the release of the hormone respective hormone, the gonadotrophin, are, uh, gonadotrophs are basically responsible for the release of the uh, growth hormones. Uh, then, then there can be the non-functioning pituitary adenomas. Uh, so the, now coming to the etiology and the molecular pathogenesis of the adenomas. There are three factors which are involved. The fact, factor one can be the humoral, the, uh, the second can be the environmental or certain uh, genetic defects or the certain mutations which can uh, play a role in the uh, molecular pathogenesis of the adenomas. Uh, really, there is the uh, MEN type 1, which is basically the pheochromocytoma, in which there is a multi glandular, -glandular uh, involvement uh, in the patient, uh, but it is rare. Moving further on the etiology and the molecular pathogenesis of the adenomas, there is certain acquired activating mutations of the stimulatory subunit of the uh, growth hormone protein, the G protein. Uh, there can be the elevation of the cyclic AMP, AMP the cyclo, uh, cyclooxygenase AMP can be there, or there can be the hypersecretion of the growth hormone. Then there can be a certain mutation in the respective genes contributing towards the uh, molecular pathogenesis of the adenomas. Uh, these mutations in the gene can be in the cyclin D1 genes, uh, the Krebs genes, the RAS genes and the pituitary tumor transforming gene. These all are basically the um, uh, mutation and the all, these are the mutant genes which contribute towards the molecular pathogenesis and the etiology of the adenomas. Kearney syndrome is basically the growth hormone and the prolactin producing pituitary tumor. And the patient with set of these hormone defective is labeled as the Kearney syndrome. So the McKinney Albert family, family acromegaly. So the basic pathology is the, uh, the whenever we perform the acidophil or basophil or the chromophobe adenomas, uh, we perform the certain staining with the hematoxylin and the eosin uh, staining properties. And there is a certain color changes which are appropriate uh, for the diagnosis of the adenomas, the respective type of the adenomas. The macroadenomas and the microadenomas are the, the macroadenoma uh, and the microadenoma, they can be uh, distinguished by uh, their size and their measurements which will be discussed later uh, as you can know the macro adenoma as the name indicates are the large tumors uh, causing the uh, local compre compression while the micro adenomas are of less than uh, 10 millimeter and there is no uh, symptom until they secrete the hormone so in the macro adenoma they are uh, large in size and they, uh, they contribute towards the uh, com uh, compression and there is the compression symptoms while in the case of the microadenoma they are small less than 10 uh, millimeter and they manifest their clinical uh, picture by releasing the certain types of the hormones uh, which are responsible for the uh, clinical picture of the microadenoma by itself they does not contribute towards any clinical feature. So moving to the clinical feature, uh, if there is the compression of the uh, optic chiasma can be there, uh, it uh, will present with the uh, field loss. So whenever we perform the field uh, testing, there can be a central field loss or the bitemporal hemianopia can also be there. Uh, the severe headache 
is another uh, thing by temporal hemianopia as i have already told you then there is the loss of the central vision uh, is also there oculomotor pulses uh, the effective uh, or defective oculomotor nerves can result into the uh, pulses uh, or other facial pulses can also be there uh, or the in, uh, interference with the normal hypothalamic uh, all the tumors of the pitch tree gland they can basically affect the hypothalamus also because as i've already explained to you that the hypothalamus and the pitch tree gland they are uh, connected while stock and there is a certain hypothalamic pitch tree axis it can be affected by these tumor uh, the loss of the temperature regulation can also be there uh, the hyperphagia or the hormonal syndrome other hormonal imbalances can also be there Hyperprolactinemia is basically the most common type of the adenoma of the pitch tree gland and it results from the increased concentration of the prolactin. There are certain physiological conditions which can result into the increased release of the prolactin. These, uh, these conditions include the uh, pregnancy, lactation or the stress. In all these conditions or in the uh, suckling reflex, uh, these contribute towards the uh, physiological picture of the uh, prolactin. These are the physiological condition in which the prolactin is increased. Then there are certain uh, pathological condition and the most important pathological condition is the, basically the prolactinoma in which the prolactin is increased uh, from the cells and the prolactin producing tumors are basically the symptomatic and they most commonly in the uh, women. But the most important point is that the prolactin is not only present in the woman. It is present in both the male as well as in the female. But in the male, the uh, quantity of the prolactin is uh, less and uh, there is less role. It is less active as compared to the females. There are usually less uh, symptoms in the male. Uh, comprises of the one fourth gland of the uh, glands benign tumor as i already told you that this is the most important so it comprises the one fourth of all the glands benign tumor and in the lateral or the posterior parts of the gland the mostly the affected parts are the lateral or the posterior parts of the gland the pathology is that the electrotroph, they basically uh, adenomas are the chromophobic, while the uh, spheroid nuclei are prominent and the nuclei are mostly prominent. And they are sparsely uh, granulated with diffuse or papillary uh, growth patterns. Then there is a certain endocrine amyloid uh, sama bodies are there. These sama bodies are basically of uh, great importance in the diagnosis of these uh, adenomas. The Golgi pattern can also be studied by the uh, immuno immunohistochemistry or the uh, certain uh, other assays. So coming to the clinical features and the treatment, uh, the clinical features can be the amenorrhea, glycorrhea, infertility, decreased libido, impotence, uh, delayed uh, puberty, uh, delayed secondary sex characteristics. <clears throat> the treatment of the microadenoma is the uh, dopamine agonist. The agonists are basically the uh, which facilitate the release of the uh, dopamine. So dopamine agonists can also be given. Uh, the bromocriptine is the example of this drug. Uh, and the macroadenomas, the mostly as I have already told you, the macroadenomas they are increase, uh, they are large in size. So that certain type of surgery should be performed to remove the macroadenoma, or you can give the radiation therapy if there are other comorbids in the patient and you cannot perform the surgery. So you can give the radiation therapy as well as the uh, chemotherapy can also be given so in this section all basically all about the uh, adenomas first of all we study that what are the adenoma they are the benign tumors and uh, then we discuss the most common type uh, of the uh, adenoma it is the pituitary adenoma then we uh, pituitary adenoma is the prolactinoma then we discuss the clinical features that how the prolactinoma presents uh, in the patient it is most commonly seen in the female and uh, these all things were discussed in this section thank you for watching scardia.com